What I have in this box is like a cross between unicorn poop and a pot of gold at the end of a rainbow. It's basically magic. What's going on guys, I'm Jody. This is Inspire Woodcraft. Today we're talking about maintaining our cast iron tops in our shops, basically removing rust and hopefully keeping it that way. Now, some of you guys know I recently got a new saw and the first job I threw at it was cutting down some birch countertops. They were big, heavy, and it was hot and I basically just sweat all over the dang place. There were palm prints, fingerprints, and forearm prints all over it after letting it sit for about a week. Now, full disclaimer, there is a lot of ways to go about doing this task. This is just how I ended up doing it, and I'm really happy with the results, so I figured I'd share them with you guys, but there are different ways of doing this. Now, if you're a little unsure about doing some of the things that I do in this video, I highly recommend starting off on something smaller, just in case. For me, I picked the table of my bandsaw to sort of practice on before I was ready to tackle this entire cast iron top. Now, first and foremost, it's good to start out with a relatively clean work area. I just took a vacuum and a brush to the top of my table. Then I cleaned the whole thing with denatured alcohol. This will get rid of the very top surface rust, but also any residues or waxes that are lingering around and give you a nice clean surface for the next step. Now, partway through this, I ran out of denatured alcohol and I went to the store to get more. Turns out denatured alcohol is like not allowed to be sold in California now, which is a bummer because that's my favorite go-to thing for this kind of stuff. It dries fast, it evaporates, and it doesn't leave behind an oily residue. Now, I finished the whole thing off with mineral spirits, and as far as I know, you can use acetone and paint or lacquer thinner. Also, to clean the tops off, you may wanna do a little bit more research because I couldn't really get to a definitive answer on that. I'm not an expert in that. Like I say, I usually use denatured alcohol or, if I have to, mineral spirits. But just keep in mind that any kind of paint thinner or lacquer thinner may eat at the paint that you don't want to remove, so just be mindful. Now, one way we can do this is to use something like WD-40 as a lubricant and hit it with a wet, dry sandpaper. I find wrapping the sandpaper around a flat piece of scrap, like plywood, works really well. Now, I personally used 400 grit for this, and it worked great, but it'll depend on how heavily rusted the part is that you're working with. Again, you may have to experiment a little bit. And once you're done, you can just wipe off the slurry, and just like that, you have a rust-free top. I think this method works really well for spot removal, but it was a bit messy to think of doing the whole top that way. Plus, I didn't like sort of the linear lines that ran through the top. That's more of an aesthetics thing. It doesn't really affect the use of the machine. So I opted to go with method number two, the random orbit sander. Now you've all used random orbital sanders before, so I won't go too much into detail here, but there are two really important things that I want you to keep in mind. Start with a lighter grit and then go heavier and keep even pressure on the whole surface. Typically with wood, we start out with a coarser grit, like 180 or 150, and we work our way up. I think on tabletops, it's best to do the opposite. I started out with a 400 grit, and I worked my way down to about a 150. Starting in the higher grits gives you a better idea for how aggressive you really need to get. Really light rust isn't going to require 220 grit paper, but you don't know that until you actually start sanding. And of course, the lower the grit, the more chances for unwanted scratches. But you definitely want to use even pressure, and don't in one spot for a long period of time. Cast iron is obviously harder than the woods we work with, but it's also surprisingly soft. So it's a good idea not to focus in one spot for too long or use the edge of the disc to try and work on a stubborn spot. That way you don't end up with an uneven top. Once I was satisfied with the finish, I cleaned the whole thing up once again and then followed up with a heavy coat of paste wax. Now I use both Minwax and Johnson's in my shop, but because the Johnson's didn't work out so well the first time, this time I use the Minwax. You just want a nice even layer. Let it sit for about 10 or so minutes so it solidifies a little and then buff it back out with a clean rack. And this will be a bit of an arm workout, but it's well worth it in the end. And when you're done, you should have a clean, rust-free, smooth top that materials should just sail right across. Now, paste wax works really well on cast iron and aluminum machine tops, and I've used it for years. That's always been my go-to. There's a product called Bow Shield, I think, Bow Shield T9. I'll leave a link in the description. I actually don't have any experience with it, but every time I've looked up this subject online, I keep coming across this name. I just haven't gotten any yet. And I don't know how well it works for lubricity on the top layer, 
but I believe it works really good for sealing the cast iron and preventing rust from keeping back up. So I will leave a link for that. You guys can check it out. And if you have used it before, leave a comment so we can all learn from that. Now, remember that box I showed you in the beginning of the video? This is basically a magic eraser for steel. Now, after you wax, as you use your saw, you're gonna slowly wear down that protective wax layer, especially around the blade. This little block is the Sandflex sanding block from Klingspor, and it works really well for spot removal. In fact, this whole scene is being shown to you in real time so that you can get a good idea for how well these things work and how quick it is to do touch-ups. Afterwards, you just put another coat of wax on and you're good to go. These things are simply amazing. And the best part is they're super inexpensive. There's three grits. There's a coarse, a medium, and a fine. And they're like $5 a block. It's basically like a giant eraser with grit in it. And then there's a three pack, and I think the three pack's like $13. So of course, if you got the three pack, you'd save a few bucks, but if you don't need all those different grits, why spend the extra money anyways? Now, pretty much everything that I've talked about today, I will list in the description for you guys so you guys can check that stuff out. But these, I really like this as a third option because this means that I can just do touch-up stuff as I go. It would be silly to completely sand down the table just because I have a few little patches that I'd like to get rid of. And it would be really silly to continuously use a rough, type of sanding apparatus right around here because this is where the majority of the rust spots show up. And then over time, I end up with a dip in my saw, which those of you that know how I, or why I got this saw know that's what my old table saw was like to begin with. Now there's one other thing that I want to throw out there before I close here. And that's the fact that your top doesn't need to be absolutely 100% rust free and perfect. It's gonna get scratches. It's gonna get beat up a little bit. It's gonna have some war scars. That's just kind of the way it goes because you use it. Heavy rust spots, especially where you're going to be moving material through, can cause issues. It can cause issues on a table saw because that's friction between the material and the table. And therefore you're gonna be using a little bit of extra force getting the material through the blade. And on a machine like say a planer, it's gonna make it so that the rollers are gonna have a heck of a time grabbing and pulling that stuff through. And you're gonna end up with more machine wear that's unnecessary and potentially in any of these situations, it could cause an unsafe work environment. So big, heavy rust spots, yes, get rid of it, but really don't stress it too much. The tools are meant to be used. They're not necessarily here to look really pretty. That's all I got for you guys. Hopefully this helps somebody out there. I know that these things worked for me and I'm really happy with the results, like I said. If you have any questions, leave a comment down below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching this video. As always, we'll see you in the next one.